we go to uh, Department of Risk Reports. Uh, we go f number one. We go to updates of various departments. Uh, anybody from our department would like? Please state the, your name, department that you are with, for the record. Cindy Sullivan, Animal Shelter. May I approach? Sure. Thank you. It does state it down here. Live exits means any animal that left the building that was alive. It's a, kind of a, a phrase that has kind of been adopted through the industry now. So that means any animals that were adopted or reclaimed by the owners or transferred shelter to shelter to Albuquerque or someone else or that goes to um, any kind of um, rescue groups or anything like that, those are all combined into one, which is considered a live exit. We have 71 uh, stray euthanasias, 95 owner turnover euthanasias. So those are people that are actually bringing the animals to us for either age or injury or illness or for some reason. Um, we had a total of 447 animals from Torrance County, six from Mountaineer, 17 from Moriarty, four from Estancia, and at the time of the report, there was 15 still left in the shelter. We had a total of 382 cat, 382 dogs, 86 cats, and six others, which is either, usually it's skunks, but it could be coyotes. We get in injured coyotes on occasion. And we had three bite cases for the whole year. Um, down at the, the next section where it says news at the shelter, um, this is how the stats look for 2014. We had a de decrease in numbers of intakes of about 22%. We have live exits were 64%, stray euthanasias 15%, owner euthanasias 20%, and 1% DOAs. Um, I do have copies for the audience. If any of you guys would like a copy of this, I do have extra ones for the audience. <coughs> of um, 137 uh, county licenses this last year, which uh, 2013 you can see was only 72. So we almost doubled the county licenses, which is really awesome. And a total of 581 total. On the back, you'll find a little supplemental report. And um, what it states is, I did some preparation in this report, uh, research on national stats that were available to me. Just some of the comparison figures, in, 19, in the 1970s, we were euthanizing over 15 million animals per year in shelters. In 2011, another study was done, and the number dropped to about 3.7 million. The most current stats are uh, saying that we have 3 million national-wide that are being euthanized still in shelters. Although this number is still not where we want it to be, it has improved. It is thought that this number will continue to decrease over time, much due to a strong push for funding for low and no-cost sterilization and, a strong, and stronger laws regarding breeding and sterilization. My research also showed that in 2014, most shelters saw a decrease in the number of, of, um, of rescues and provide our, I'm sorry, a number of animals entering the shelter and it is thought that one of the big reasons is that shelters and rescues are providing sterilization and programs to help people, more people keep their animals in the home rather than having them surrender due to low income and unemployment. We started a food pantry in 2008 for this very reason. All food is donated by the community and local businesses. For this year in 2014, we served at least 28 people at the pantry. Um, we try to keep bags and cans of uh, puppy food and dog food. We also have dry and canned for cats. From time to time, we have a uh, cat litter. 
We also have seen donations of rabbit, chicken, and some pellets. So in conclusion, it is clear that the shelter continues to be an asset to this community as a whole, and we continue to take animals from the city of Moriarty, Mountaineer, and Estancia. Thank you, Cindy. Are any questions from the commission? Any questions? Um, Cindy, what kind of um, advertising uh, do you do? Uh, I, when I look at the consent agenda, I see uh, um, you do a lot of printing there, right? Printing. Um, we don't do any printing, hardly at all. The only time we do any printing is for um, employment. Okay. Uh, but um, the money comes uh, from... Uh, um, item line for printing materials or, or office supplies. Do you advertise, how do you, my question is, how do you advertise your um, service we to don't. the community? We don't advertise it. It's, um, we have uh, all of the shelters in the area, the cities and every, you know, those places, and a lot of the uh, businesses that donate to us, it's a word of mouth type of thing. And we have uh, a lot of people that just call and say, hey, we, we want to turn out our animals, we can't afford to feed them. And so what we do at that point is let them know we do have this service and they can come in and get food. And they're, you know, it's a process that they, they we um, allow a family to get food up to four times a year. So we're not just feeding people's animals constantly, you know, if you can't really afford your animals, then you maybe need to lower your numbers. And, you know, we try to help them with that. We try to help them with sterilization. But that's what kind of opens the doors to us to share that. We are going to be having a, uh, a spring flea fling, uh, um, uh, rabies clinic and stuff in uh, March. And we were hoping to advertise that. But, you know, we don't, we don't really advertise that, that program at all. It's just kind of a word of mouth thing. Do, do you have money in your budget for advertising? Um, probably the printing that you've seen is um, about every two or three years we have to get cage cards printed and we have to get contracts printed because they're double and triple thing and we go through the, uh, the prison most of the time to get that and then the cards are a place in Albuquerque. But um, we, do have, we do have some funding in our, in our printing that we could probably do that. So you are open to this idea, maybe advertise uh, to let people know what services uh, you have uh, there uh, for them? We can do that, but we've even found when we advertise for positions and jobs, people don't even read the newspaper very much anymore. It's a sad thing, but a lot of people don't get that newspaper. It hasn't done us a lot of good, but we're going to try it again the end of March and see if, what kind of a, a turnout we get with this event and see if it does reach a few people. But we've done things over and over again. We've put our events in and people are like, oh, we didn't know anything about it. They just, people don't do a lot of reading of the newspaper anymore. So our biggest thing is to put it on our websites and put it on our Facebook and, you know, different things like that. We do, we do do that. And we do let people know uh, constantly about our food pantries and, like I said, the other animal control officers in the area always send people to us that need assistance. So it's it's kind of hard. But I am open to it. Yes, ma'am. I said that your intakes <clears throat> were down 22%. Why do you think that is? Well, that, that's what, that's what uh, prompted me to do a little national uh, research and find out, you know, why and see if, if anybody else was seeing this. And, and national, national averages they've dropped about 20%. And I think that the other part of it is possibly because we haven't had an animal control officer that's been a full-time animal control officer for quite some time. So that, you know, that, that does impact what our intake is. I know I uh, had done a, uh, a little uh, research on it a while back and our previous animal control officer was bringing in probably 25 to 35 animals a month and our current one was is doing approximately eight a month. So whether that's going to be the drop, the 20% drop that everybody's seeing, that animals are just not being brought in, 
and then that other percentage that of availability. What's my thought? Probably stay and neuter has affected that some. Um, I do believe that. We have had a lot of calls and we've had several programs in the county that uh, also um, have been up and active for this entire entire last year or so. Yeah, probably that too. We didn't see quite as many puppies and kittens as we did before. And we only had one big, um, I won't call it a hoarding case, but one big situation with feral cats um, uh, one month last year where I know we took in 25 cats from one home. So that, that drops when we don't have the big hoarding cases of taking in you know, the continual flow of, of animals when we're trying to lower the numbers of people's animals. So that makes a big difference too. Thank you.